here's a little something before I end the day. A few days back, I had posted uh, a video of a some guy who was giving a lecture about the the amount of people who live in poverty in the world today. It's it's about three billion people. I had said in my posting how that video would make you want to stop the world and get off. And in the very nice self-correcting nature of the internet, one of my friends on my Facebook feed posted this chart that I've got open right here in front of us. It talks about the number of people living in extreme poverty versus the number of people not living in extreme poverty today. Extreme poverty being defined as living on less than about two dollars a day. Two dollars being about eight ringgit in Malaysia. So if you look at the chart, you'll see that the amount of people not living in extreme poverty is way higher today than it was 200 years ago. The world is much fuller of people not living in extreme poverty today. And also, encouragingly, if you look at the red part of the graph, you'll see that the number of people living in extreme poverty has actually decreased in absolute terms and in relative terms. You see that there are fewer people living in extreme poverty today. But another thing that struck me was that in my research I come across the statistic that there are more slaves alive today in 2016. Well, strictly speaking, that stat was a couple of years ago, but nevertheless, there are more slaves alive in the world today in 2016 than uh, all the slaves put together prior to the 20th century. So what I want to say in a sleepy state before going to bed is that there is a paradox to truth and there is a paradox to reality. On the one hand, there are more slaves alive today than ever before in the course of human history. And on the other hand, there are way more people not living in poverty today than ever before in both absolute and relative terms. What this means for you and me is that if we want to be optimistic, we can find evidence to support our optimism. If we want to be pessimistic, we can find evidence to support our pessimism. Both have basis in reality. And that's just the nature of reality. It's a paradox. Pessimists 
tend to think they are realists. And so the optimists. When I'm being optimistic, I don't think I'm being optimistic. I just think, I believe I am a realist and optimism is reality. When you look at the data, you find that you can be an optimistic realist and you can be a pessimistic realist or put another way you could be a realistic pessimist you could be a realistic optimist both points of view have a basis in reality so what is left is the old question that Agent Smith in the Matrix Revolutions posed to Neo. Why do you keep fighting? Why do you get up again? And Neo's answer, because I choose to. At the end of the day, we think we have rational reasons for our optimism or our pessimism, but really, we just do what we want to do because we want to do it. And then we find the rationalizations to back our choices. That's just the way we are. So I just want to pose this question to you. Are you an optimist or are you a realist? And what is your evidence to support your worldview? Good night.